Hi there! Thanks for joining me in Homeschool Behind the Scenes. I'm really glad that you're here today because we are going to be talking about finding a way to get our kids the best education possible. We're going to do that by pulling back the curtain on homeschooling so you can see what it really is. You're in the right place if school is a struggle for your kids this year, or maybe your kids just really need a change from what was going on last year. Maybe you're longing for more peace, more rest, a slower pace. Maybe you're just curious about homeschooling. You've heard about it, not really sure what it is. If any of those resonates with you, you are definitely in the right place. So I get it. I have been there. Just a few years ago, I was in your shoes. We were rushing every day. Things were hectic. We were struggling. We were crumbling under all the pressure of the fast pace. My daughter was crying every day over assignments that I was trying to make her do them. And then we left it all and started homeschooling. So yeah, I'm just a mom. Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm a homeschool mom now with four kids. These days I have one in high school, one in middle school, one in elementary, and one in diapers. Yep, I have it all. Today you're gonna learn about a more peaceful, positive way to do school, an authentic way to do school that gives you time to snuggle, time to wonder, time to breathe. We're gonna talk about 10 key questions about homeschooling so we can pull back that curtain and let you see what it really is like and if it maybe might be an option for your family. And at the end of this webinar, I'm gonna give you an amazing freebie. It's a way that you and I can work together if you think you're ready to jump in, but if not, either way, I'm gonna deliver so much value to you for the next few minutes. You are welcome to leave at any time, but I hope you stick around to hear about the freebie at the end. All right, we're gonna move at a quick pace, so grab a pen and let's get going. Are you ready? Well, the first question I get asked a lot about homeschooling is, how long does it actually take? How much time does homeschooling take up in the day? Well, it's naturally gonna be a shorter day than a public school day. On average, I would say probably about four hours, but that can really vary depending on what grade levels you teach. Your younger students in preschool and kindergarten probably only need about an hour to an hour and a half a day. Yep, that's it. But as they get older, they need a little bit more. So first to third grade, probably about two to four hours. Fourth through sixth grade, probably about three to five hours. And your upper grades need about four to six hours a day, depending on the content that they are going to be handling. Why is it so much shorter? Well, think about it. When you go to public school, you have to factor in time for transportation, time for arrival and departure, time for settling down, packing those backpacks up. They have to wait in line. They have bathroom breaks. Um, there's meal time, there's a time it takes to walk from the classroom to the cafeteria, time it takes to walk to the gym or to the music room. There's a lot of transitions that go on. So when you cut all of that out, the, sh the school day is a lot shorter. Okay, the next question I get asked a lot is what does mom or dad's role look like? And that's a wonderful question. It really varies from one home to the other, but in general, it's gonna be going to be a combination of some direct teaching, where you're going to sit down and actually instruct your child, and some facilitating and guiding, where you're going to help your child know the work that they're going to be completing. There's gonna be some checking of that independent work. Um, as a general rule, in the lower grades, your kids will need you more. So if you are thinking about homeschooling a kindergartner a first grader, a second grader, they're going to need you more because they cannot read yet. So you're going to need to be reading to them a lot and doing their work really with them side by side. However, as a child begins to grow, they become more independent. And the big shift really happens around third grade-ish, depending on your, your child, because they can read much more independently and fluently by that age. So then your role becomes more of a manager. You manage their curriculum, choosing what it is that they're gonna be studying. You manage their content, you manage the schedule, you make sure that work gets done. You are the facilitator designing the best educational experience for your kid and making sure that it happens. Question number three, how do you know what to teach? Another excellent question. Well, we always just start with the basics. Every year, every child needs to learn language arts, math, science, and social studies. Some states also require certain subjects, such as good citizenship. And then you might, might want to throw in an elective or two, such as typing, or Spanish, or Japanese, or art, or robotics, or 
whatever your child is interested in or whatever you want them to study. In our home, we always study the Bible every year as part of our homeschool curriculum because that is really important to us. And that's the beautiful thing about homeschooling is you have the freedom to teach more traditionally, to teach content that expresses your core values as a family. You can teach more authentically in a way that captures the joys of childhood. You just need to make sure that you cover all of your basics, and then beyond that, you have the freedom to do a whole lot more. Question number four, how do you make sure that your kids don't miss something? This is a really common question among parents and a really important one. Obviously, we don't want our kids to get behind, especially if you plan on returning your kids to public school the following year, or maybe you're just homeschooling temporarily, uh, or maybe you're just kind of trying it out to see if it's a good fit for you, then you definitely don't want your kids to get off pace with their peers or behind, right? So how do we make sure that they're not missing something? Well, the main thing that you can do is just Google your state's guidelines. Every one of the 50 states has educational guidelines that they have established, and you can just do a common Google search uh, with your state. They're very easy to find. You can download it, and it tells you everything that that child is required to know for that school year by grade level. You also are welcome to follow the Common Core. You can also find that by just doing a, a Google search again. Um, however, you're not required to follow Common Core. You're also not required to follow those state guidelines when you homeschool. In fact, many parents are drawn to homeschooling because they disagree with the new math or the new methodology that's been pushed lately, and they want to teach in more traditional, maybe old-fashioned ways, the tried-and-true methods. Um, and they want to teach maybe in more authentic ways, more hands-on, and they also want to instill their own values. So you definitely can do that as well. In fact, you don't even have to teach every subject yourself. Now that may sound funny at first, but what we mean by that is that there's lots of ways in the homeschool community to work with others to make sure that your child is taught. You can join with other parents in a homeschool co-op, and that is where parents help each other. The families work together to school each other's children. So if you kind of feel unqualified, say maybe by junior high science, then you can find somebody to help you teach junior high science when that time comes. Um, there's also tutors, there's retired homeschool moms, retired teachers, there's online educators. There are many options out there if you're not really sure what to teach or how to teach it. But let me reassure you, that there are also tons of homeschool curricula out there, wonderful publishers that walk you step by step through exactly what you are supposed to cover. All you have to do is buy the homeschool materials, the books, and they literally tell you exactly what to teach, often day by day, so there's not even any prep work. So don't worry, if you choose to homeschool, you have a lot of help. And that leads us to question number five. What curriculum do you use and where do you find it? Well, if you really, really want to, you can actually just go ask your public school teacher from last year if you're leaving public schools and say, hey, what textbooks did the kids use last year? And you can go buy them on the side or buy next year's textbooks and just continue with the exact same thing they're doing in public schools. But once again, many homeschooling families are homeschooling because they don't want to use those kind of materials. They may want to use materials that are more um, faith-based materials, things that help them to promote their own values with their children. Let me reassure you again, there are hundreds of made-for-homeschool curriculum options. There are tons of homeschool publishers that are um, open and available. Some are secular, some are religious. There are many, many options for use. And they are specially designed for the homeschool environment. This means that they are designed for one-on-one, -on -one, parent to child, or they are designed for small group use, whereas public school materials are geared for large groups. So it's a very different way of teaching. And you can get a lot more teaching accomplished one-on-one -on -one in a much shorter period of time than you can a large group. And these homeschool publishers, they, they help you to take that instruction and tailor it um, to specifically meet the needs of your kids. So you have to really consider where is my child struggling 
where are the areas that they need help or the opposite where is my child excelling where are they bored how can i make some changes and then you can adjust their curriculum to advance them more quickly through areas where they're excelling or slow things down when they're struggling you can you have a lot of choices open to you when it comes to homeschool curriculum question number six is a really great question that i hear frequently which is how do you know when a homeschool curriculum is accredited well, brick and mortar schools and online schools must be accredited in most states. However, here's the great news. Home schools do not need to be accredited and curricula cannot be accredited, only schools. Even the public schools, when they adopt a curriculum, that curriculum is not accredited. It's the school that's accredited, but home schools are not required to be accredited at all. So both local schools and home schools get to choose their own curricula. So in this area, you're not any different than the public school. In fact, when I used to be a public school teacher, and you can ask any public school teacher, we would sit on these boards about every three to four years and adopt a new curriculum. Well, that's basically what homeschool moms do every year. They just sit down and they adopt a new curriculum to meet the needs of their kids. The difference is that in a school environment, you're adopting one curriculum to meet the needs of hundreds of children. Whereas in your home, you get to choose the absolute best curriculum for just your child. It is completely tailor fit to that kid, which is an amazing blessing. Question number seven is a really big one. What are the legal requirements for homeschooling? Well, let me start off by saying I am not a lawyer. I cannot be held responsible for any legal answers. However, I can tell you a few things. The best one is this. Homeschooling is legal in all 50 states, which means you are allowed to do it. It is a valid option no matter what state you live in. However, the laws vary greatly by state. Some states have homeschooling laws about attendance, um, required subjects, what you must study, how many days your students must attend school. Some require testing. Some states have pretty strict procedures in place for how you go about establishing your homeschool. And then other states have very few laws. Um, it sort of really depends from state to state. And if you decide to homeschool, that's something that we'll look into is how do you homeschool in your state? Grades are not required. However, they are necessary in ninth through 12th grade for high school transcripts, but they are not actually a legal requirement. And so you'll see that many homeschooling families do not give students grades in the lower grades. A great resource if you're wondering about the legal requirements is Homeschool Legal Defense Association. You can Google that. They have tons of material and they break it down by state. So you can kind of see what might be expected in your state if you're looking into homeschooling. Question number eight, how much does it actually cost to homeschool? Well, that's a wonderful question, but just like buying a car, the answer can vary greatly. You know how when you go to buy a car, it really depends on are you getting a used car? Are you buying just a workhorse kind of car? Are you buying a van? Are you buying a really, really nice car? Is this a Porsche? What are you buying, right? Well, the same thing goes with homeschooling too. It can really depend on how you want to homeschool, how you do things and what options you're looking at. Your primary expenses you're going to run into are books. You know, when they go to public school, they issue all the books to them. But when you homeschool, you have to buy all the books yourself, and they do add up. Also workbooks, and then school supplies, and all their materials, including things like lab materials that can also cost. Um, you might need things like technology. They may need a computer or a tablet. And then any furniture needs um, that you might be looking at, maybe some shelving, places for storage. There's a lot of things. It kind of depends on from family to family what you already have and how you want to homeschool. But the good news is there's also a lot of ways to save. So homeschooling does not have to be very expensive. Many homeschooling families are on one income because there's often one um, parent who stays home. And so they often um, buy used books. There's a very strong and robust homeschool used book market where you can buy and sell. Um, you can also reuse materials. What I mean by that is if you have several children, the curriculum you buy for one child, you can modify and use for another child. There are also free homeschooling options that you can find. 
And also, you just reallocate your funds. And what I mean by that is, if you think about it, if you are leaving a public school environment, you're already used to buying school supplies every year. You're already used to paying money for the school fundraiser and for school photos and all those things that they nickel and dime you for throughout the school year. But you don't need any of that anymore. So you take that money and you reallocate it for homeschool books and workbooks. Also, when you stay home, your kids don't need as nice of clothing. They're not going to school, so they can stay in their pajamas all day long if they want to. And so you don't need as much. So in some ways, homeschooling can actually save you some money. So it really does depend, and I'm almost even hesitant to like give you an actual number, but just so that you kind of have a ballpark, I would say the average annual cost would probably be somewhere around $300 per child, but I certainly know people that can do it for way less, like less than $100. And then if you want to join co-ops or have a lot of field trips or use some really expensive materials, I know people that spend several thousand dollars each year per child. So it really does vary. Okay, question number nine. Wow, we're moving quickly. Okay, how do you teach more than one grade level at a time? Okay, this is a tricky one, right? You have to put on your hat like a one-room schoolhouse. Think back to how it used to happen in Little House on the Prairie, right? Because that's kind of what it's like. And really the answer is that it's a mix. It's a mix of styles and different ways. It's a mix of direct teach time with the parent and then also having the child do independent work. So in other words, you're not spending every single moment sitting right beside your child, especially as they're getting older. They're going to have times where they're going to be doing their work on their own and other times when you are going to be directly teaching them. One of the ways that we solve this dilemma is by teaching family style. And what I mean by that is, well, think about what we mean when we say family style dining. Like you go to those restaurants or really it's more at home, right, where you put one big pot of mashed potatoes on the table and everybody takes a spoonful. Well, it's the same kind of thing with homeschooling. I might pull all of my children together to do a science lesson. And the science lesson might be about pond life. But for my little tiny kids, that might be just naming the different animals that we see living on a pond, that there's frogs and there's tadpoles and there's fish and there's flies and things like that. Whereas my older kids might be learning about metamorphosis and the frog life cycle and what's involved in all of that. So you're teaching family style and then everybody is studying the same thing, but at different levels. And, um, but we're still working on it together. Another common thing you can do is to get others involved. Um, the mother, if you're the primary homeschooling teacher, does not have to be the only teacher. Dad can be involved and choose to do one or two subjects. Grandparents can help teach. Um, sometimes older siblings jump in and help teach younger siblings and go over things like math facts or spelling words. And as they do so, it's reinforcing those concepts in their own mind and teaching them valuable skills about how to work with others. Another popular technique that we use in homeschooling is called time blocking. And this is just where all the kids are sitting down doing the same subject, but at different levels. So for example, I might call all the children and say, hey, it's math time. Everybody sits down, everybody does math. But I might have one child doing first grade math and another child doing third grade math and another child doing fifth grade math, and the mother or the homeschool teacher is just circulating, walking around, checking everything, helping with individual topics or individual problems that the child is doing, but everybody's working on the same subject. Some families really love to do homeschool like that. My preferred way is probably what I call college style. As kids begin to get older, we may not meet every single day over every single subject. So it might be that I might tell my daughter, for example, hey, we're going to do math on Mondays, Monday math. And so on Monday, I do a bunch of the direct teaching. We dive in. We cover a bunch of different concepts. Um, we practice it together. We work through it till I know that she's comfortable. And then maybe on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, she might just do independent work by herself. And then the following Monday, we sit down and go over everything that she did and correct everything that she's working on and then we go through the next week's content and so in this week in this style i might only meet with one child over a certain subject every other day or i staggered i say mondays are math 
Tuesdays, we're going to go over science together. Wednesdays, we're going to go over social studies together. But that style really only works with older kids. Younger kids are going to need you to do their work with them every day. So the way that you teach really is going to vary depending on the phase of childhood that your child is in. Like what grade are they in? And also how many kids you have. If you only have one child, then you certainly can stay right by their side all day long. But if you have two or three or seven, then you're going to have to find systems that help your children to work independently, but also have time where they're with you. Okay, question number 10. I saved the hardest for last. How do you get your kids to listen to you? I hear this so frequently from parents. I think it's a common problem among all parents, right? Because our kids know which push buttons to push to get a reaction out of us, don't they? This is the hardest thing. How do we get our kids to actually listen to you? It can be a great struggle. And sometimes when parents are thinking about homeschooling, what they're envisioning is just forcing their kid to do homework for four hours. Well, let me reassure you that it is not like that. Homeschooling is really different and you get to set everything up. So it's not just this forced yuckiness on them that they hate, right? You can make it so that it's more doable for them and more doable for you. One of the ways that you do that is just by setting your expectation. You help your child have ownership over their own education, creating their own education, studying things that they're interested in alongside of the things that they're required to learn so that they have more desire to actually learn and to have fun while doing that. Also, establishing a routine is a really important part of getting your kids to work. If they know exactly what to be um, doing every day and what order, they are much more likely to get that done. A big part of it, too, is minimizing household distractions. While that may seem trivial at first, it's a really important part. When you're home, there's things like phone calls going off, there's Facebook distraction for mom, right? There's laundry to fold, there's dishes to be done, the kids have their toys all around. And so you have to really work to create a homeschool environment where those household distractions are, are kept to a minimum. But here's the biggest thing. Homeschooling is teaching to the heart. It is teaching a child a respect for authority. It is teaching them obedience to um, to those who are above them, whether that's parents or teachers or authority figures, because ultimately what we're trying to do is mold them to have a godly character. We always say around our house, a godly character is of much greater worth than academics. And so it is way more important to me that I get to your heart than that you have conquered your math facts. So we don't tolerate lazy work. We don't tolerate disrespect in our home. Learning how to do school with willingness is a heart issue, and that's the way that we treat that. So when you go into homeschooling, you have to go into it as more the idea of molding a child's complete character than it is just shoving a head full of academic knowledge. And that is really important. Okay, so again, just one more time, remember, you're molding a child's heart. We're not just packing a head full of information. Good character is of greater worth than math facts. I promise, it really is. Whew, that was a lot of information in a really short span of time. I hope that we really answered some of your most pressing questions about what homeschool actually looks like behind the scenes. But I bet your mind is buzzing with a whole bunch more questions, right? So if that's you, then I have the perfect freebie for you. It's free. This is called the Ultimate Homeschool Boot Camp, and it is a five day crash course so that you can go a little bit deeper and thoroughly consider whether homeschool might be the right choice for your family. And if you decide that's the path for you, then by the end of the course, you'll have all the knowledge necessary to begin your homeschool journey, which is really cool. It'll give you some fabulous clarity. So over the course of the five days, you will have an email delivered every day to your inbox with some material that you can go over at your own pace. Here's what the five days look like. Day one is what homeschool is really like. Day two, is it the right choice for us? We're gonna talk very authentically about the pros of homeschooling, but also some of the drawbacks so that you can really consider it. On day three, we're gonna talk about homeschool styles. 
different ways that you can homeschool. Day four, getting started and what getting started really looks like. How do we actually do that? And then day five, I'm going to lay out for you the exact roadmap of the steps that I took when we decided to leave the system and become homeschoolers. It worked for us. I know it'll work for you guys too. Seriously, you have nothing to lose since this course is free. It's just five days doing a deep dive into whether you think homeschooling might be a good fit for your crew. But if not, you'll feel like an awesome mom knowing that you at least took the time to investigate another way for your child to learn. Because I know you want what is best for your kid. So I really hope you'll join me in the Ultimate Homeschool Boot Camp. Remember, it's a way for you to really consider whether homeschool could be the right choice, exactly what you've been looking for. This might be what you really need for your family. And if so, you'll have all the tools you need to jump right in. Here's the thing, if you know that school is simply not working for your child this year, if they have been struggling, you owe it to them to at least consider other options. Homeschooling may just turn out to be the magic bullet that you've been looking for to help your child thrive educationally. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was informative and, hey, maybe even enjoyable. But let's stay in touch. You can catch up with me on Facebook, where I am Maestra Mom one or on Pinterest, same thing, Maestra Mom one My blog is www.maestramom.com. And if you signed up with us via email, you'll be getting a follow-up email from me shortly. And you're more than welcome to reply back with any questions that you might have, and I will attempt to answer those for you. If you join the Homeschool Boot Camp, we're starting a Facebook group just to support that, and I'll be answering questions in there too and interacting with you. So I hope you'll join the group and we will dive into homeschooling. God bless you.